Uh, I hope you're all staying safe during the lockdown. I have heard from Paul Hanley that our friend uh, and foe William Allen is apparently in hospital with um, the coronavirus. He's not on a ventilator, but he is getting oxygen. Um, and I, Paul Hanley told me today that he, his condition was stable, so it just shows you uh, it is out there. So um, make sure you look after yourselves. So I have um, three images here that I'm going to work on. Uh, one which is my own, which is this one, uh, taken in January 2017. One of um, Kenny Gibson's, which was his entry in the uh, Photographer of the Year competition. And one by um, Leo uh, of uh, Carla Monaco. So we'll do the um, uh, high key one by Kenny Gibson first. So I'm in Lightroom. I go into the develop mode. And as you know, uh, I buy my 50 by 40 mounts with a 36 by 26 aperture. So I have a pre cut um, custom crop which is 3.6 by 2.6. So that is just a ratio. But if I use that um, ratio to crop an image, I know that if I print it 36 centimeters on the long side, uh, it will fit my um, window mount perfectly. So I'm just looking at a crop like that. Obviously I'm trying to get the center line in the center and you can see there, um, I'm using the guidelines to make the center run right down the center of the model and the center of the white box. Um, so I'm happy with that. I'll just hit enter. So there's the crop highlights. Um, you can see there on the audio or on the audiogram on the histogram um, that we're fairly close to the right hand side, which is what you'd expect. So it's already a high key image. Um, but I have brought up the shadows by plus 50. Um, the exposure by not 0.25, a quarter of a stop. And I've increased the contrast by 10. The whites by six. I've brought texture down minus four and clarity plus three. And there's no set formula for this. Um, this is just what I ended up with the other day whenever I was testing it. So to well, recap. It before and after. Um, let me see if I um, so you'll not see an awful lot of difference there between the before and after what I've done is bring up the exposure slightly um, I've increased the shadow detail by plus 50 which is quite a lot uh, the whites by plus 6 and I've to make to compensate, I don't want it to get too flat. So to compensate for that, I've just added plus 10 to the contrast. So let's say I'm happy with that. Um, because it's going to be a black and white, I don't worry about color temperature. Um, if you were, you know, going to do this as a color file, then you might maybe cool that down a wee bit just to take a wee bit of the warmth out of the skin tones. But because I'm going to make it black and white, I'm not going to worry about that. So once I've done all those changes on um, Lightroom. It's straight into Photoshop for me. So photo, edit in Photoshop CC. Now I am, my computer, my iMac is an old version, so it has not upgraded to CC 2020. So I'm using CC 2019. Um, there are quite a number of good upgrades to Photoshop 2020 but uh, I can't use them, unfortunately. So there we are, we're open in, um, in Photoshop. So as you know, my first step, Command J, duplicate layer. This is, I've got my safety net below. So if I mess anything up on this layer, I can just delete the layer. If I double click on the magnifying glass over here, I'm in at 100%. There you can see 100%. So I'm now gonna look for any little flaws. So we've got a hair. So that hair, not only is there a hair there, it has caught a highlight, so that would need to be removed. Um, we've got something here in the hairband that would uh, probably be best fixed. And um, 
we've got a bit of a bump on the uh, the bun of her hair. Um, we have some bruising, um, bruising there, and uh, we could probably try a wee bit of body shaping. Um, Jerry Coe did mention one of the poses of one of the models in the Photographer of the Year competitions. Um, the legs looked a wee bit um, sort of um, chubby, shall we say, and he did remark, I'm sure the model is not overweight, but it looks, you know, her legs look big. So in this case, we might just look at shaping, uh, just taking that down a wee bit, taking that down, we'll do that now. So the way I would do that is in liquify, so filter liquify. And it's the first tool up here, the forward warp tool. So I use command plus plus to zoom in and uh, I'm just make it a wee bit smaller. So I'm making my brush bigger or smaller with the left and right square bracket keys. So if I keep this, um, you, you see the little um, crosshair in the middle of the, of the brush. So if I just keep that outside and push down, I can just push that down a fraction. Likewise here on the calf, you can see, obviously the pressure you can see there with the pressure on the calf because of this uh, extreme pose. So I'm just thinning the calf there, I'll thin that ankle. Whenever you get a wee bump like that, you make the brush smaller to deal with it. And then over to the other. So this one I don't think is as pronounced as the other one. So it's just very small increments and we could enhance the uh, the waist here so I'll just push that in a wee bit there and of course the calf again on the ankle So be kind to your models. You ask them to pose in all these wonderful positions, etc., and uh, they can't see themselves and see the effect that getting into these positions has. So be kind to them afterwards when you're processing. And I can also use this for her uh, hair bun. Rather than pushing the hair bun down, I'm actually going to push this bit up. And then I'll push that wee bit down. So I'm obviously trying to get a wee bit more symmetry here. And there is quite a bump on that shoulder, so I'm just going to push that down. Okay, so I'm going to commit to that. And then if I hit Command-0, my image fits the screen. The advantage of doing this on the duplicate layer is I can click off the layer. So if you watch on the um, the ankles and, and calves and on her waist and on her hair, you can see those subtle changes. For me, they do make um, you know a, a, a definite difference that is better, makes the image better. I'm happy with it, so a flatten image. Command J, my new safety net is below. Um, oh, what I wanted to show you as well was Kenny's version um, from the, the Photographer of the Year competition. So there we have it. And uh, you may have seen my comment that, um, you know, it appeared to be far too bright and blown out potentially. But if, if we use the... Um, um, info tool. Anywhere I put the cursor now, you can get the reading. So you can see there on the brightest part of that shoulder, the reading is coming up in here. So look in here. 
the reading's coming up as 240, 242, I think was the highest reading I was getting. So 255 is pure white. But the trouble is, whenever I cross the line from her shoulder to the background, there's no real difference. So in other words, they blend into each other. And that is why it would have the appearance of being blown out. Likewise here, look here, 236, move on to the knee, 237, 238. So they are too close in brightness values. And that means that the, where the skin is, it bleeds into the, the background. So it is not even close to being blown out, but it appears to be blown out. And that is the problem. Um, so um, it was the lack of definition between where does this, where does the thigh stop and where does the background begin? Where does the shoulder stop and where does the background begin? Um, so I'll just, uh, I'll just click back on this or the other image. So now I'm going to deal with um, that that hair um, here. So you zoom in for this. So I'm in at 300% and I would use the uh, ordinary healing brush tool. And I don't, my healing brush tool, I have changed it from being a circle to being slightly elliptical. I forget who gave me that tip, but um, I, I have my um, healing brush um, in the, an elliptical shape rather than round. So anywhere I hold the Alt key, that is where it's sourcing from. You can see as I press the Alt key, you can see it's sourcing. So I just go very close to where I want to clone. Then I'll resample again. Now don't forget, I'm in at 300%. So anything that looks uh, a wee bit off, a wee bit odd, it's being exaggerated by the fact that we're in at So if we click before, after, and go Command-1 to be at 100%, you can see that hair is gone. Flatten image. Command-J for a new layer. Um, the likes of this, um, I'm not sure what this is, a little label or something on our hairband. Um, I will probably just use content aware fill on that. Let's see what content aware fill does on that. So I'm just rolling around it very loosely with the uh, lasso tool. And if I then go shift backspace, it brings up the fill menu. Make sure that's filled with content aware and click OK. So it hasn't done a great. Oh, I know why that has happened actually. I'm going to go Command Z and undo that. Um, <clears throat> Feathering is set to eight pixels. Feathering needs to be at not pixels whenever you make your selection. Otherwise, the feathering um, ruins your content aware fill. So do content aware fill with zero feathering. So let's see the difference now. Shift backspace and I can just hit enter because I know it's filled with content aware. Now it's not great there. Um, so in fact, what I would do now is probably try and um, do little sections, shift, backspace, enter, shift, backspace, enter, shift, backspace, enter. Um, I've ended up with lines here somehow. So I probably would clone some of this. I'm just going to flatten that again, first of all. Command J, and I'm going to create a new layer. Um, so I'm cloning on a blank layer. There's my clone tool. S current layer and below. If that was set to current layer only, it would have no effect because I'm not cloning anything. But I'd probably set this to about um, 70% and um, make it a soft-edged brush. 
alt to source So at 100%, I don't think anybody would uh, notice much there. Flat an image. Command uh, J. Now, I wanted to deal with the, um, the bruising um, here um, and that sort of skin tone. Now, again, this is going to be black and white, so we don't need to worry too much about it. But um, I have an action for frequency separation. This one is by Glenn Dewis. Uh, I'm just going to let it play. So what it, what it, what frequency separation does? It separates texture from the texture of something from the color. So um, this gray layer is the texture of skin. And, uh, you know, even though that is a bruised area, it still has the texture of skin. So it's the color, really, that is the problem. Um, I'm just going to click on a new layer here. Um, and uh, I'm going to, whoops, where are we? I'm going to pick up, if I select the uh, foreground color picker, that allows me to um, click on a skin tone. So I'm going to pick on a skin tone, um, a, what I would call a sort of a neutral skin tone for, uh, for this model. So I'm going to click about there. And I'm going to hit my B for brush. And I'm going to hit maybe 2 for 20% opacity. So up here you can see 20% opacity. I'm going to hit Shift. Um, three to give my flow 30%. So in order to get to 20%, I have to sort of keep um, um, going. So remember, this is going to be a black and white image. If this was a color image, I might be a wee bit concerned about the sort of yellowy skin tone that we're getting there. There's the before and the after. Now that is too much, um, but we can play with the opacity, of course. Now again, I'll just pick up skin tone again. So on this thigh, maybe there, just reduce the saturation out a wee bit. this shadow line or dark line, I can just paint over it. It basically goes away because it's still got the texture of skin on it. Um, so command zero to fit the screen. And in fact, we'll, we'll zoom in a wee bit here just to see the um, collapse, the frequency separa separation layer. So before and after. Now, I'm not sure what is turned on there that is uh, bringing out all the detail in the hair there. Um, something is having an effect in the hair. Detail, so there's a detail thing there. I'm turning that off or in fact I reduce the opacity of that um, to 40%. So it's just adding a wee bit of uh, detail to the hair. Um, there is the layer that I want to turn off and on. So it's too much. Again, it's at 100%. So play with it V6, 60%. What does 60% look like? 50%. So I'm probably happy at 50%. So I'm going to flatten the image. Command J. Um, there's really not an awful lot else needs done to this image. One thing that I 
um, was a wee bit concerned about was this shoulder being slightly brighter than the other one. Um, I, a simple way to do this would be just to go image adjustments curves. There's a little hand tool here on the curves tool. And if I click on this area of our skin and drag down, I'm darkening that shoulder. Don't worry, I'm darkening the whole image, but I'm just going to paint this in over that shoulder. So there's the effect of that curves adjustment, Alt and Mask. Now, to do this, I, the best way to do it is through a luminosity mask rather than just painting. What I could do is just B for brush. Make sure I'm painting in white um, at, say, 30% opacity and just paint that in. As I turn off and on, you can see there the effect. So I'll not bother doing it with a luminosity mask. In fact, that's that's uh, probably pretty good as it is. So you can see the difference there in the detail that has been brought back on that shoulder. So flatten image. So now we're going to make it black and white. So Command-J is my method. Turn off the top layer, click on the bottom layer, and I go into Filter, Next Software, Silver FX Pro. And I just go into the neutral, what I call the bog standard, very first one. And um, normally I don't play about with it too much. I don't think I need any real reason to play with it at all. You can just play with highlights, midtones, shadows, etc. But I'll just go bog standard and click OK. Then I turn on the top layer and click it on. Filter, next software, back into Silver FX Pro. Now, Kenny did want this to be a high key image and you can see the effect that he went for. So there are a couple of high key presets in Next Software. But as usual for this type of thing, they are OTT. So there's one, high key one. So that's not a million miles away actually from you know the result that Kenny got. And high key two. So you can see that with high key two, There is a wee bit more definition uh, in the skin tone. And then what I normally do is I look over here to see what sliders they have moved to get the effect that they've got. So they've brought brightness up 45%. And on the basis that less is more, uh, if they go plus 45, I'll be thinking, no, I need to rein that back. I need to rein it in again. So what about brightness plus 30? Um, highlights minus 44 so if you don't know what a, a slider does remember it's at minus 44 and then wang it one way and wang it the other way and just see what the effect of that slider actually is so at minus 44 um, let's see we can actually bring that back so I'm gonna go minus 20 on uh, or minus 21 on highlights I'll do midtones it's up not move it, see what happens. So it's picking up her skin as a mid-tone. So if you want the uh, skin a wee bit brighter, you can raise it or you can bring it down. I might just bring it down minus two. Shadows, let's wind the slider and see what we get. So it might bring those down a fraction minus five. Dynamic brightness, what does this one do? So it was at plus 57 or something like that. So again, less is more. If they want plus 57, you go less. So bring it maybe to plus 40. Contrast is up 39%. Amplify weights up 100%. Bring it back. Less is more. 80. 
and click OK. So what we have now is our own version of the high key. Um, command zero makes it fit the screen. So that is the bog standard uh, black and white conversion in Next Software, and that is our version of the high key. Um, what if we went V5? We've now got a 50% mix of the two, 50% of the bog standard and 50% of our version of the high key. Um, we can go seven for 70%. So it's now 70% the high key and 30%. And none of you will end up on the same numbers, um, but I just want to make sure that we have sufficient separation between the uh, shoulder. So we're starting to lose it a wee bit. What if I go five, 50%? That brings back a wee bit of that definition. And if you like to say 70%, you can, of course, just put a white mask on, B for brush, and paint, say, if I paint it, if I hit number three for 30%, I can just mask off some of this high key version, which will what? It will reveal more of the bog standard version below. So even though we dealt with the brightnesses of that shoulder, you can see what effect the next software has for it on it. It has uh, no respect for the work that we've already done. You know, always need to keep an eye on what effect it's having. Uh, I'm painting in white. So Gerald no doubt noticed that. So um, if you paint in white on a white mask, it has absolutely no effect. So there's the little specks of black on the mask. Well, they're mid-gray, it's only a, a fraction that I'm, there's the effect of that mask. If I shift click on the mask, you can just see that wee bit of added definition coming in on the shoulders where I have uh, painted to reveal more of the um, bog standard black and white conversion below. So command zero, and we've gone with 70, 30 mix quite like that, so I'm just going to flatten an image. Cancel, whatever happened there. Flatten an image. Now, even though this is high key, it does need a wee bit more bite, in my opinion. So I'm going to go Command J. I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply, and I'm going to put a black mask on it. So underneath this black mask, if I shift click on it, we've got a multiply layer. What I'm going to do now is use a luminosity mask to pick up on the shadow areas. So if I go, I'm using the TK mask here, but you can use any luminosity masks, even this, you know, the ordinary standard ones. Um, all this is is a shortcut. So dark four, anything that appears in white is um, selected as a shadow. So look at that. Look at this. How could you ever? select those areas of highlights, or of shadows rather. Um, that, this is why luminosity masks are so powerful. So darks three, if I just hit the selection tool, I have now selected darks uh, three, and I'm gonna paint with a white brush. At, uh, let me see, we'll go, a, we'll go a high opacity, but a low flow. So I've gone for 70% opacity and a 20% flow. That means that to get to 70%, I have to keep um, you know, brushing. So I'm just going to go over the shadow areas. And I don't need to be careful about where I'm painting because through the luminosity mask, we have just selected the shadows. So those little shadows under the hands will be selected automatically. The dark bits of her hair, any dark shadows in her hair, that we crease shadow on the shoulder, will all be selected automatically. So let's see what the before and after, so how subtle is that? Let's have a look at the mask, Alt and click on the mask. You know, isn't that amazing? Um, So the whiter I make this, 
the more pronounced the shadows are in this area. So before, after, before, after, and it's just what making it more black and white. Even though it's high key, you want to avoid that sort of flat look. So it's not high key, but it's got that nice little kick. You know, it's got a true black point by doing a multiply on the shadows. Um, and apart from that, I think all we would have to do is sharpen. Now, this is just a white box um, and, a, and a white background, so there's nothing to sharpen on it. Um, so this would be a perfect image to sharpen using the um, uh, camera raw filter or a high pass sharpening. We'll sh I'll show you the camera raw. So Command J, oops, Command J, filter, camera raw. And it's these two little mountains. And a mount, we'll go for about 100. Radius about 0.8, maybe 0.7. The lowest you can go is 0.5, which is half a pixel. So we'll go for 0.7. Detail off, um, and then it's this magic masking tool. If I move the masking tool, nothing happens. But if I hold the Alt key, I move the masking. So anything in white is being sharpened. So you can see it's picking up all sort of art, artifacts on the floor that you, know, you can't even see with the naked eye. So I just want to move that up until the only thing being sharpened is the edges of the box and the model herself. So something around 55, 60 is pretty good in that. Click OK. Now to see sharpening, you have to either go Command 1 to zoom in 100% or double click on the magnifying tool. And if we go, before, after, before, after. You just get that nice little sharpening to the edges. Flatten image. Command zero. So there is my version of Kenny's image. If we, Kenny's image is open on the screen here. If I go window, arrange, and tile them vertically. And just bring this one, command, minus, minus and on the main command minus you can see the difference um you've got still uh, a high key image um but you haven't lost the transition from the model's skin tone into the background um if you did want it to be more high key what you can do is command j change the blend mode to screen so we're doing the opposite of what we did with the shadows Put on a black mask, and now we can select um, some of the uh, highlights. So um, instead of going in for the darks mask, we're looking for a lights mask. Maybe try a mid-tone mask. Anything in white is being selected. Mid-tone, mids one actually looks quite good. It's not selecting the background. Um, so I'm just going to hit on the selection to make that a selection now. So B for brush. Um, I'm going to go like something low on this, 30% opacity and maybe a 10% flow. So I've gone three, shift one. So that's how you get a 30% opacity and a 10% flow. Three gives you the opacity, shift one gives you the flow. Um, B for brush, and again, I don't need to be to worry about where I'm painting because I've got a live selection of the, uh, the model, as you saw whenever I showed you what uh, the mid-tone selected. So what I'm doing here is revealing the, um, the screen blend mode layer underneath. And this will be very subtle, painting with a 30% opacity and a 10% flow. Anywhere that I want to be more brighter, I'm going to brush more. I'm going to stay away from the shoulders, obviously. I'm going to stay away from the edge of the thighs. But if you want to see how subtle this is, if I alt click on the mask, there is the mask. There's the effect. And I'm just very slowly and very gradually bringing up the brightness of the model skin tone. 
So if you do want it more high key, Kenny, that is a very simple way to do it. You've already done a multiply layer on the shadows to keep that, what I call the, the black point. And now you're doing a screen blend mode on the, uh, I would say highlights, but they're actually a mid-tone as the luminosity mask proves. So there you go. I would be quite happy with that and flatten the image. So, um, yeah, that one, as far as I'm concerned, then can be, so if I go file, save, you can see here it's a CR2 file, so it means it's taken the Canon. If I go file, save, that will change to a TIFF file and it will be saved in Photoshop, or in Lightroom rather, um, as an edit TIFF file. But slow, still you can see it down here, 50, what, so there it is, if I just close it down now, go into Lightroom, and the beauty of Lightroom, your original, there's the edit TIFF file, and your original, um, color raw file is still preserved. If you wanted to come in tomorrow and redo it, but do a different crop, you just simply go into the develop mode and change your crop mode. Whatever, whatever you want it to be. If you want it to be square, go on to one to one. There you go. So your, um, your crop and your original RAW file are never lost in, uh, in Lightroom. And there's your edit to file ready to go. Okay, that's image number one. Hopefully everybody followed that reasonably well. Image number two is from um, Leo. And again, I will just go into the develop mode. So, I'll go back into my um, 3.6 by 2.6. And I'm now again obviously looking for um, symmetry. So I want that um, upright of the stool to be in the middle. So there you go, there's the, the line going uh, hopefully more or less perfectly up the middle of the uh, the upright on the stool. Um, hit enter on that. Now the main thing that we want to avoid on this is losing detail in the trousers. You can see there I've got these warning triangles on so if there's blue paint that means blocked up shadows. If there's red paint it's blown out highlights. So um, you know the routine hopefully. Um, Rather than wanging the sliders, I'll go on to shadows, and every time I hit the plus key, I'm going to plus five. Now I like to be able to see the uh, um, the histogram. I've lost the histogram here for some reason, but um, shadows. So look at look at the detail coming out in these dark trousers. I'll bring up the blacks as well. Ross, have you just clicked the triangle beside histogram? Will it drop down again? Um, I hadn't. Oh, there's something on my screen there talking, Ross McKelvey. There we go. Uh, so I was covering it up. Um, so I've still got a warning in the black box here. So if I just go click on blacks again, and plus five, plus five, there you saw. So minus five, plus five, that makes all the difference getting rid of that uh, deep black point. So we want to see um, detail in these dark treasures. We want, essentially what we want to see is highlight and shadows on her treasures because that makes it more three dimensional. Um, looks a wee bit warm to me. Um, possibly a wee bit magenta. So look at the skin tones. You can only do this really by eye. Um, I just think there's a wee bit magenta there. So you've got green and magenta. So I'm just going to bring down um, from plus 15 or whatever it was to plus 12 on the tint. Temperature, um, five, five, wee bit warm. So again, I'm just going to go using the minus key, 
down 50 at a time. 5-2 is daylight, so that looks okay to me. Um, and I don't think there's anything else that I want to touch here in Lightroom. I'm happy I've got my 36 by 26 print ready. Um, I could just bring the highlights down a fraction. Minus five. And uh, maybe because of the texture in that um, gray jacket, I'm just going to bring up the texture plus 10 and then straight into good old Photoshop. Now, I'm not sure whether Leo envisaged, envisaged this as a black and white or a color, so I'll keep it in color. Um, let's just zoom in at 100%, look for any problem areas. So Carla has a little scar on her forehead, um, which is apparently from measles. So um, she is very easy whether you leave it or take it out. Um, let's see, so Command J, and then I can use that uh, healing brush tool again. Alt, Alt, so they're gone. Um, it doesn't look the sharpest to me on this file, um, but we'll show you just how, you know, it's, at the moment it is an unsharpened Fuji file. Lightroom is not, doesn't have the best reputation for dealing with Fuji RAW files. Um, it's okay, obviously, it looks sharp enough at that, but whenever you actually go in at 100%, um, well, at 100% it's not too bad, actually. We were zoomed in more than 100% there, so um, that's okay. We've dealt with that little skin blemish. Um, Command J, and um, what are we going to do to this? So we want to bring out a wee bit more detail in the, uh, the black trousers, make these trousers more three-dimensional. So let's try some of the Next Software filter, Next Software, Color FX Pro, And I might look first to something like Detail Extractor. Now, by default, it's far too much. It has made her black trousers gray. Um, so uh, we want to increase the contrast. That's something that we nearly always have to do. I've gone plus 33 in the contrast. If I click on the Compare button, I can see the before and after. And all I'm looking at is her trousers. I don't worry about anything else that is uh, being affected. Um, and I'm now going to add another filter, which is Tonal Contrast. There. Now it's getting way too much here. Um, saturation, I'll bring down to zero. Um, shadows. So I'm going to click OK on that. So I've applied Detail Extractor and Tonal Contrast. And before, after, before, after. So you can see now, Previously, you hadn't maybe realized just how see-through the material of her trousers was. Now you can actually see that it's semi-transparent. So Alt and Mask. Shift click on the mask shows you what's underneath. And then you can just do that to see where are the areas that I want to paint in. So B for brush will go for 70% opacity. and. Um, 
shift two for a 20% flow. And then making sure I've got a soft brush. There we go. So you can see um, there is the areas where I've painted or missed in some cases. So before, after, it's too much. If you like it at 100%, you love it at 70%. Less is more, so V7, 70%. Brilliant. So flatten image. Now, what about this uh, jacket um, and maybe your hair? Um, so we want to add a wee bit of life to that jacket. So command J again, filter, next software, color FX Pro. So I'm going to look and see, I mean, Bleach Bypass is the one that I refer to as a filter from hell. No doubt somebody at the back is going, oh, I really like that. But um, saturation is at minus 50. I always just bring it back to normal. And contrast is at 55. The lowest you can go is 20, and 20 is plenty. Good rhyme, 20 is plenty. Um, so I'm just increase it to 24. Local contrast, wang the slider up, wang it down, and just see what is the effect of it. So you can look at how much detail is being brought out. Even though we've already done her trousers, look at how much detail potentially could be brought out on the highlight parts of her, uh, of her trousers. So um, maybe plus 55 on that, click OK. So Alt and Mask, and um, just to show you, you can use a luminosity mask. I imagine a luminosity mask would pick up the gray mid-tone of that jacket fairly well. You can also use a thing called Select Color Range. So if I click on the layer below and go Select Color Range, I, anywhere I click now and I hold the Shift key, I'm basically telling Photoshop anything this color, make it white. So look how white the jacket is getting. It doesn't matter that bits of the floor or bits of the, uh, um, her hair might be getting selected because I'm not gonna paint over those. I'm only gonna paint over the jacket. So I'm gonna click okay on that. Command H to hide those marching ants. So those marching ants are still live. I've just hidden them. B for brush. And um, we'll go for, well, we'll just leave it at 70% opacity and a 20% flow. And I'm now painting with white on the black mask to reveal what's underneath that black mask. And I don't need to be careful about where I'm painting again because we used the uh, select color range to select the jacket. So whenever I release the mouse, you'll see what the mask looks like on this um, black mask. So if I alt click on it, look at that. I mean, how could you how could you hand paint that? The answer is you couldn't. Um, you need either a luminosity mask or select color range. Look at the way the hands have been masked without me doing anything. So before after and all it's quite a subtle effect hopefully you can see that so before after it's just making the jacket that fraction more three-dimensional and the more three-dimensional your um, picture the more you know the more it's going to be attention grabbing and a judge will like it um b we'll go for 30 percent opacity here on the trousers because i did like the effect I've still got the um, 
the live selection. So if I go Command D to deselect, I'm now painting on the mask just with an ordinary white brush. There's no live selection. So even though we thought we'd already made the trousers three dimensional, we're now making them even more three dimensional. So before, after, before, after, flatten image. Um, let's have a look at Carla's eyes. So Command J, um, Carla has got these sort of puppy brown eyes. There's a little tip here in the uh, dodge and burn tool. You've got dodge, burn, and you've got a sponge tool. It can be set to saturate or desaturate. We want it to saturate mode. 30% is quite good. And I'm just going to run over her pupil, her iris rather. And let's have a look at the before and after. Less is more, so V6, 60%. You like it? A flatten image. Um, there's really not a lot more to be done to this as a color file other than um, Command J sharpening. So I'll show you my sharpening method with high pass for this. Again, we don't want to be sharpening that background and floor, etc. So other high pass. And you want to be typing in a radius just where the details are becoming apparent. You want to be in at about 60, 50, 60% here. So three pixels is plenty. And then we change the blend mode to either hard light or soft light or overlay. You can see um, hard light is the more you know pronounced sharpening. Soft light is a softer sharpening and overlay is something in between. Um, on this particular image, being a Fuji file, I'll probably go on the um, overlay method. In fact, I'm getting some little artifacts there. So I'll we'll go V5 on that 50%. Let's just see by comparison, um, if I bin that, let's just see what um, next software sharpening gives me. Filter, next software, output sharpener. So by default, it's um, display. So you want to change display to inkjet. And then you want to have viewing distance auto. Paper type, I always go luster no matter what I'm printing at all. I just like the effect here. And the trick is printer resolution halfway down, 2400 by 2400. It doesn't matter what your printer is, whether I'm printing your image, you're printing it, or somebody else is printing it. I don't care what the resolution of your printer is. These settings are just designed to work without you having to touch anything else. So I just then click OK and before, after, before, after. So there's not an awful lot of difference um, in the two sharpening techniques, um, the soft light um, high pass method or that. So I'll just go V7 on that, just to take off a wee bit and flatten image. So command zero to fit the screen. Um, if you wanted to apply a vignette, just draw it out. And hopefully most of you have seen my vignette method where I um, everything from now on is um, recordable. So I've just got a vignette at 70%. So I just press play on it. It's very subtle there because that's... Uh, so let's say we like it and we just flatten the image. Okay, so that is Leo's file done. Um, it did occur to me that if you were making it a black and white, let's just make it a black and white. So Command J and filter next software, Silver FX Pro.
So remember, the first step is always neutral, bog standard, black and white conversion. And uh, I might just look at pushing up the midtones a, a fraction. So we'll just go plus 10 on the midtones there for brightness. And then turn on the top layer, click on it, filter, next software, Silver FX Pro. And now essentially we're just looking for something with a wee bit more bite to it. And say so some of these are very gimmicky and you just want to avoid them like the plague. But no matter whether they're gimmicky or not, have a play with some of them just to see what they do. Um, there's high contrast, you know. Look, it's just ruined all the uh, detail that we brought back into those trousers. So why would you go and waste all that effort and, and go under that type of um, um, preset? So low key, high structure. You can see how mad some of the images get. Uh, push process is actually not a bad one. It's, it's given me what? A black and white that I love. Um, does it have any grain? If it does, yes, it, so there, there's quite a lot of grain on that. So if I push it all the way up to 500, that actually is removing it. You might think you go to zero to remove the grain. You actually go up to 500 and, and that's the, the grain removed. Um, quite like that one. So I'm just going to go okay on that. And then we can go before, after, before, after. What about a 50% mix? Bog standard, 50% of the other one, 60% of the other one, 70, 65. So if you go 6, 5, you get 65. If you go 6, scratch your nose, 5, you end up with 50%. Um, so I like what that's doing to the background. It's making the background quite bright and it is enhancing the shadows on her face. Look at the change from the bog standard. If you look at this area here, her face, and that's obviously where you want the, you've got the shape of the body, the, the symmetry of the whole thing, but they're going, the judge is going to look at her face. So no contrast, might look okay, but look what it could be. Look at the enhanced shadows, the brightness of the face there with that, and that's at 65%. Um, I'd probably go flat an image on that. And uh, there we go. That is quite a nice high contrast uh, black and white uh, file. Any little blemishes? One thing we didn't notice was this hair coming down in the thigh. So we've got a spot here, little spot like that. I wouldn't bother doing a duplicate layer. I would just use a spot healing brush and just click on it. The, the spot healing brush works best whenever it's a, a hard edged uh, brush. You don't want to do it with a soft edged brush. Uh, it just doesn't have as good an effect. Um, Let's go Command-J in case we mess this up on this hair. So let's just see what the um, spot healing brush does. I'm not expecting it to do a great job if I just run it down over these hairs. So you're always, you know, that is what, what we call judge bait. You're dangling those little hairs and defects or problems in front of a judge, seeing if he'll take the bait. And if he does take the bait and spots it, he'll say, why didn't they deal with that little spot or that little hair or that little blemish? That could have been so perfect, etc." That's always what's running through your mind as you're going through the image here at 100%. We're zoomed in at 100%, looking for any little problem areas that we can fix. So little marks on the floor, just the ordinary um, spot healing brush. And look, you've probably got about 60, 70 little black spots there. Um, 
would you go to the bother of removing absolutely every one? That is entirely up to you. Trust me, I've been there and done it. You get the idea. A um, couple of score. So there's a score mark on the uh, the floor. Let's just see what happens if I make it a bigger brush and just run. the whole way down that defect. So before, after, um, it has done a pretty good job. On a print, any of these with little dark marks on a white floor will show up like a red flag uh, to a bull. And that's why I would recommend trying to deal with them as best you can. So command zero, and there we go. Flatten image, and if I go file, Save that has now changed from a RAF file, which is a Fuji RAW file, to again an edit TIFF. So that looks pretty decent, Leo. I have to say, um, I think you might have some success with that one. Close that one down, go into Lightroom, and there it is edit TIFF file, and the original RAW file is still there. Um, Laurie sent me, before I work on my own image, Laurie sent me a couple of pictures of dogs here um, saying, you know, how, would you, uh, how on earth would you go about cutting these out? So we've got two very different images. Here we've got, you know, a, a, a picture of a, a dog against a sort of cleaner background. This one would be not only tricky because of the... Uh, you know, the grass, etc. But it's also so out of focus um, on the back of the, or not out of focus, it's just shallow depth of field. You know, the head of the dog is in focus, but how would you cut out such an out of focus or, um, you know, an area that is not sharp? So um, the way I would start it would be quick selection tool. And I'll probably just go select subject. In CC 2020, if I it has selected both subjects, um, if I had drawn a rectangle around the poodle first and then gone select subject, it would have ignored the person here. So I can now go on to minus, uh, or I can just actually go on the lasso tool um, and minus the selection and just very roughly get rid of that selection there it's gone so let's see now what we've got on this little poodle so it's not too bad but what we do is we go on the back to the quick selection tool and we've got select add the selection and take away from selection so i'm on take away from selection and i just push that in on the edge The smaller you make the brush for your selection here, the uh, the better it is. If it's a bigger brush, it can go it can go mad um, and select far too much very quickly. So this has all been missed here. So I want to go back onto the plus selection, and I want to push the selection out a bit. But as I say, this is a really difficult um, 
test that Laurie has set um, with this poodle and a shallow depth of field. Um, you're not going to be able to do much of a job there, I don't think. Uh, if I make that quite small and just see what I get. It's so tricky, the transition here. Um, so there is a pretty decent starting point. Now, um, you have a new tool called Select and Mask. The one that I preferred was called Refine Age. I've never really worked out how um, Select and Mask works. So if I hold the shift key and then go select, select and mask, hopefully that will bring up the refine age, which it has. Um, so you can see you've got the green tinge in here. Um, it should do a reasonable job on these hairs here and in the mouth. But you're going to take your time going around the edges of the uh, the poodle and letting this refine edge do its thing and try and get as good a starting point as you can get. So I'm not going to go uh, all the way around. I'm just trying to give you a flavour for how you get as good a selection as you can in the first place and then how we potentially refine it. It's always all about what I call, or Joel Grimes talks about selling the fake. Um, you, this contaminate colours should... If it sees the green, it should get rid of it. Now, it's not really picking it up there, so it's having no real effect that I can see the decontaminate colours, but it's having no harm, certainly push, pushing that up. Um, you can increase the contrast. And we could... Um, let's just see if we push that, what we get. So pushing that feathering up to maybe two pixels. Output to new layer with layer mask. And I'm just going to go Command J on that, and then I'm going to right click on the mask and say Apply Layer Mask. So we've now basically just got the, uh, the, the poodle on a cutout. Um, the mask on the layer below, you know, it's just a mask. Now we've just, we've got an actual cutout here because we, have, we, we applied the mask. Now, if I go a new layer and right click and choose create clipping mask, um, I can, you know, paint over these green bits. Um, I pick up on the color of the poodle's hair or fur. Be, say, 30% flow, 30%. And anywhere I see the green, I can paint over it basically to get rid of it. If I release the clipping mask, you'll see how mad it is. Anywhere I've painted, well, I was, it's not too bad actually, but the clipping mask basically clips it to what's visible in the layer below. So I don't need to worry about the edge of the tail, I can just paint. 
Now I'm not going to paint with that color, so Command Z. I'm going to pick up the color of the tail. So I'm trying to get rid of the dark edge. So you get the idea. Um, let's see what the effect of that layer is. So if I like that, I would probably just go merge down. Um, now there is a, a few little tricks here. Um, <clears throat> you can make a hairbrush. Um, I'm just going to go Command J in case I mess this up. You can see how Command J as an effect on your cutout, and that's where you want to go create another clipping mask. And it has it doesn't have that doubling up effect on the edge again. Um, or in fact, I'll just release the clipping mask and I'll turn off the layer below. Um, so I said about a hairbrush. Let's see, where's my hairbrush? Hairbrush. So hairbrush is just um, dots. We're at nearly, nearly 2,000 pixels here, but you can see all these dots, hopefully. If I bring those down to maybe look over here to see how many pixels, I'm at 8 pixels. So I've got all those dots at 8 pixels. You can't even see them. It's just a little speck. And um, if I use the, uh, let's see, what is it called? Smudge tool with that brush. I need to bring it down again. So we're down to 20 pixels, in fact. So I'm smudging the outside of the hair. And this is so subtle at this size that um, you're probably not picking up. Let's see the, the change. Um, I can't show you the before and after with this way. Uh, or I could turn the layer on below. But that's where we're getting that doubling up effect that I'd wanted to avoid. Um, but hopefully you can see, if I make it a bigger brush, you can really see what is going on. So there, all those dots are supposed to be little hairs. There's what I'm doing, but I'm at a fraction of the size of that. So there's undone. Bring that down to a much smaller size. What are we at now? We're at 25 pixels. I am basically creating a false edge. And, I mean, this is a fairly, uh, I mean, we're at what, we're at 16.7% on this. Um, if I just crop this and um, down to the dog. If you were cutting this out and putting it on, on another image, um, you'd probably get away with it reasonably well. I imagine Laurie's going to be playing with textures and whatnot with this dog. Don't know why I think that, but um, um, you're going to get away with it because you're going to be making it smaller, presumably, than it is at the moment. Um, and something that is not well cut out, whenever you make it small, you know, you get away with it. 
Um, I just want to show you how to refine things like, you know, you see you've got this dark edge, etc., or you've got green grass. I mean, I would just clone for the likes of the green grass. So I would just use the ordinary clones, clone tool um, at 100%. And alt click clone out the grass. Um, other things you can do, I'll uh, create another blank layer, right click, create clipping mask. Um, if you wanted to um, do something around these edges, you can again use the ordinary brush tool. I'm on the hairbrush, I want to go back to an ordinary soft brush. And I'm going to pick up the colour of the uh, fur on the poodles leg there and say 30% with a 30% flow And I don't need to be careful about where I'm painting because I've got the clipping mask. Um, but there's the before and after. So hopefully that um, helps you, Laurie. Um, I just wanted to show you on this one here. Um, select subject again. It does a pretty decent job, you know, a couple of seconds there, but again, we've just got to push that edge out over this uh, paw. Now you can see we've missed hairs here, etc. but that's what refine edge is for. So shift key, select, select and mask. There's refine edge. And I just make it a bigger brush. and let it hopefully find some of those additional hairs. Now, hopefully you will enjoy the next little trick I'm gonna show you. So I, I'm only gonna do that bit of the, uh, the dog. I could go around obviously the whole thing, but um, I just wanna do this hopefully fairly quickly to show you it can be worth doing something like this. So output to new layer with layer mask, click OK. So again, I want to right click and apply layer mask. So uh, we've now got the dog cut out on a blank layer. Now again, we've got, you know, this is such an obvious cutout. We can again go what we did before with the other poodle. We can uh, new, new layer, blank layer, right click create clipping mask and I can then pick up on the colors of the hair here so um, pick up a fairly dark hair and what are we at B for brush and we're at 30% flow and 30% so I am just allowing the edge of the brush to pick up on those little edges that refine edge found. Before, after. You can change the blend mode to multiply, which could be too much. That's actually probably better. If we go V77, 70 70%, 77%. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, merge down. Um, so this is a little trick I learned from Glenn Dewis. Um There is a brush, now I couldn't find it the other day, I did find it. Um, 
I had to reinstall brushes to try and find it. It's brush 112. I think it is called a... Um, there it is there, June Grass. So brush 112 in Photoshop. And I think by default in brush settings, it is set to... Um, I mean, I don't recall changing any of these settings, so we've got uh, scattering on. Um, you can see as you change the scattering, you want to have quite a high scattering for hair. So I'm going 100% scattering, um, or jitter, count jitter rather, whatever it's called. So count jitter on the scattering. And um, I pick up, for instance, up here, I'm going to pick up on the black hair again. Dark hair. We come in at 100%. Now I'm going to do this on a duplicate layer. Um, turn off the bottom layer. So I'm at what, I'm at 300 pixels. This is maybe too much, you know it is. Uh, bring it way down. Don't know whether you can see the effect. If I make it bigger, you'll see the effect. For some reason, those are coming in quite late. Um, let's change it to deeper black. I'm not sure what is happening here. Um, if it's paint over there, you can see, you know, it's coming in quite late, even though it's a dark brush. So I'm not sure what is causing that. Well, uh, maybe, capacity and flow were both 30%, that could be it. Uh, that could be it, yeah. So 30% black, it's painting it basically at grey, yeah. So if I go not, um, and I could also change the painting mode to multiply. So um, you want 100 percent, yeah, there we go. Well done, William. So this is 100 percent opacity, but 30 percent flow. So I'm look, I'm creating hairs on the edge of the dog. And uh, you rotate the angle of them um, in the ordinary brush tip. Um, where are we? brush tip shape so you can rotate the angle of the hairs depending on what side of the dog you're painting on so if you're going to come down here on the right side I think we need to flip that horizontal otherwise the hairs are going in rather than out so Laurie I hope you have some fun playing with this um, brush 112 or whatever it is um creating fake hairs on your animals uh, you can see that i mean that's having a pretty good uh, cool effect and there's the before oh, well, i can't again show you the before and after because it's all on the same layer um but you get the idea you can make a pretty darn good cutout obviously if you're painting here you're going to pick up the color of the breast hair here um, so just clicking there gives you that nice shade of brown and we spin the brush down like that and we just come in there and create those nice brown hairs. So I look forward to you creating your masterpiece, uh, Laurie, in due course with those little uh, tips. Okay, the last image that I was going to work on is one of my own here um, of Stephanie. I've already produced a couple of uh, award-winning images out of this. Um, so if we go into the develop mode 
and I think my um, 36 by 26 crop should work fairly well on this. So in fact, at the moment, that's just keeping the material in nicely on the edge. Um, her face is nicely in the middle there. Um, so I'm just going to hit enter on that. Um, you can see the wee black, the shadows triangle has got something on there. So if I click on blacks and just go plus there, took plus 10 to get rid of that. Uh, I'll just bring up the shadows a fraction. I don't want too much. And highlights down. You always go up in shadow detail and down in highlights. So I want to uh, make sure I have detail in that um, tool material. There's minus 100. There's no such thing as too much. If it needs you to go to a minus 100 to look right, go to a minus 100. Uh, I'm going to go minus 90 on that. Uh, it looks a wee bit flat at the moment, but we're going to fix that. Um, there is a vignette tool in Lightroom, post crop vignetting. Just click on the amount and just go minus, minus, minus. There's minus 15. Um, before, after, before, after, minus. And might be enough. So, um, color temperature, let's have a look. Um, possibly a wee bit magenta again. So, just bring that down one point, probably as marginal effect. I'll go to one five one five oh. I just do this by eye. Um, and I'll maybe just bring the Vibrance down a fraction. Bring it down to see what it does, and then bring it back to normal and go minus five, or do you like plus ten? Nobody will end up in the same number. We all have our different tastes. I'm going to go minus five on vibration, or uh, vibration, vibrance. Um, so photo, edit in Photoshop. And hopefully we shall appear in Photoshop. There we go. Um, by the way, I like to work with this mid-gray background. You know, if you just right click there, you have a choice of black, dark gray, medium gray, light gray, custom. You can make it red if you want, uh, whatever you want. Uh, but I like, as I say, the dark gray. Um, so let's zoom in and see if there's any little problems that we need to fix. Um, don't know about fixing those hairs. I wouldn't get overly excited about them. Um, you know, they're, they're natural. They're naturally occurring. A couple of wee bumps on the nose there. So Command J, and we'll go to the healing brush tool again. And we're in at, what, 200%. And we go fairly close to the area that we want to fix. Just going to deal with that highlight as well, I think. So there's not too much on uh, Julia Clements did the makeup on this. So there's not too much needing retouched up model with good skin to start off with and um, good, strong, matte makeup on Julia. Any blemish there, maybe on the eye, I'll just go a bigger brush and just
just deal with a couple of these little hairs. So. And then once you start doing hair, sometimes you go, ah, oh, what the hell, I will get rid of them. So I'm not going to get rid of them entirely. I'm just going to rein them in a wee bit. I'll just maybe get rid of this little loop here. So before, after, before, after. A bit of a blemish created there. Um, alt. So flat image. Um, I think we need to do. We need to enhance the eyes here. So again, Stephanie has got very good color in her eyes. So Command J, um, I'm gonna bring out a wee bit of detail. Um, there's a filter from Hell again called Image Adjustments Shadow Highlights. And by default, it is far too much. So you need to again, rein it back, less is more. So I'm just looking at the iris here. I'm not looking anywhere else. So Alt and Mask, there's it masked off. B and 100% opacity, 100% flow. Need to switch back to a soft edged brush. Painting in normal mode. No doubt Gerald spotted that. So the reason you paint at 100% opacity and 100% flow is if you start messing about with opacity and flow, you'll end up with two eyes looking very different. If you go in at 100% on both, then you know that they've both been affected the same amount. Now, obviously far too much, V5, 50%. Still too much V3, 30%, getting more, 35. So I'm gonna go with 35. Flatten image, Command J, and I'm gonna go back to that technique of um, in the dodge and burn, there's a sponge tool. What the sponge tool does, it does is it enhances the color that's already there. So before, after, before, after. I'm gonna leave that at 100% flatten image. Now I do have a little filter called Imaginomic Portraiture. I just wanna show you what it does. So Command J, filter, Imaginomic Portraiture. Now it's quite an involved bit of software. There's a lot of settings. I use one called Enhanced Tones. I've made my own preset, enhanced tones minus one plus two. Um, but in fact, I've switched it. It's a plus one plus two at the moment. So minus one means minus one in brightness. The smallest change, if I go from brightness not to brightness two, it's quite a, and contrast, I'm at plus two. If I go plus four or five, it gets really contrasty very quickly. You know, um, you really just want to be using these uh, plus one, plus two, minus one, minus two, etc. There is plus one on brightness and plus two on contrast. Plus one on contrast might even be enough. 
So it's not just a skin softener, it, it enhances the tone, so it does a wee bit of sort of dodging and burning. Um, V6, 60%. So um, all this material here, it's just material. So we've got a, this is quite catching on the eye here. Um, whereas this is a sort of a straighter line. So I might try and do something with that. So command J, filter, liquefy. So if I think this material is too much, or I don't like the shape of it. I can push it in, push it down. Now this, where I've revealed the background there, that's going to be a problem on the layer below. Um, we might have to fix that in uh, Content Aware or something. You'll see what I mean once I go, once I commit to this change. So, yeah, so there's where I knew I was going to be creating a problem, but that's so easily fixed with Content Aware fill. So there's the before and there's the after. Some of you might say you like that little swirl. Um, purely a matter of taste. I'm just showing you a technique, how to deal with things if you, if you think they're a potential problem. So let's say I just commit to that. And then I have to deal with that little uh, area there. So I just, uh, in fact, I'll do it with the uh, patch tool. So I just select it. And the beauty of the patch tool is as you drag it, you can see as long as you've got um, Let me see. Uh, normally I would see what it's going to be filled with. Oh, I'm losing because of the menu for um, the uh, zoom. It's covering up some of my met on things on screen here. So let's just go back and try that again. We're on the Who's in the way here? Where's that bloody tool? There it is, patch tool. So as I drag it, it shows me what it's going to get filled with. And just release it and it's gone. So I want to make sure there's detail in this material here. So Command J. Filter, Nick Software, Color FX Pro, and you can guess where I'm going. Um, detail Extractor. So just again, raise the contrast before after, before, after. So it is having a very good effect. Not on the whole image, but on the areas where I want it to have it on an effect. So Alt, and mask, it's now all blacked out. B for brush, uh, we're at 100% opacity and 100% flow, that's fine for something like this. Soft edge brush, and I'm just painting over the uh, the material. I don't need to worry about the edges, it's where it's sort of gathered up here um, that I need to make sure we're seeing the detail of it. So before, after, before, after, I'm gonna weave it over her hair. If you'd gone over her hair, you just go X to make I'm now painting in black on the white mask. So 
So before, after, much more detail coming through. Hopefully you can see that on the uh, white tool material. So vignette would do well on this. I'm going to make it a slightly bigger at the top than at the bottom. So I don't have to draw it out in a um, symmetrical way. And then I just click on my vignette action. Or after, before, after, pretty good. It's already, I made the action 70% opacity. That an image. Um, Command J, filter, Nick software, Color FX Pro. And something that should be the finishing touch on almost every image is dark and light and center. So at the moment, the effects are being applied to, it's lightening the center and darkening everything else. Um, and I just bring it back a wee bit. Border luminosity, if it's already a dark border, you can go quite low on this. So I'm going minus, say 15. If it was a lighter background, it might be at minus 30 or minus 40, etc. Center size, 20 or less. So I bring it down to about 16. And then at the moment, those changes are being applied to the center of the image. Now, her eyes are probably in the center of the image, but you place the center. I think of it as the center of attention. Now you can see this is the lit side of her face. This is the shadow side of her face. So I'm going to click on this eye rather than in the center of uh, her face. Um, and that's going to keep hopefully that, you know, uh, modeling light. So her face rather than being flat is... Uh, Still got that lit side and shadow side. Less is more, V60%. Still has that effect of dark and light and center. Flat an image. The only other thing I think I would do with that is um, sharpen. So Command J, filter, next software, output sharpener. It will remember the settings I had from before. So Inkjet Auto Luster 2400, don't need to click anything else, just click OK. And if I double click on the magnifying glass, we've got before, after. So a raw file does need sharpened. A raw file by default lacks contrast, it lacks saturation, it lacks sharpness. You've got to take control of that. And if, if you're not good in Photoshop, you should actually be shooting JPEGs uh, because your JPEGs are sharpened and vibrant and saturated and all the rest of it. So uh, um, working with raw files requires you to do that. So I mean, that looks just fantastic there, the detail there at um, 100%. So Command-0 to fill the screen. command minus just to see it a wee bit. And... Uh, I think we might maybe see that entered in a competition or two. Um, I might just refine that by making this more um, symmetrical, I don't know, but that's all I intend to do with it. Uh, oh, one thing I didn't show you, the catch light in the eye. Um, I showed you what we do to the color in the iris, so Command J, you may have seen me do this to the Kingfishers uh, in an online video, so Dodge Tool. You can set the dodge tool to work on highlights, shadows, or midtones. We obviously want to set it on highlights. It's a 10%, which is probably pretty good. And I just bring it down to match the size of the cat's light in her eye. And I just give it a quick pass. And there's the before and after. So it's just making that cat's light stand out before, after. Plot an image, file, save, and it will now be converted into an edit TIFF file in, and saved in Lightroom. So close it down. In fact, before I do close it down, I'll just show you um, you may know that I have a, an action called Velvia Color Boost. Uh, always do it with a duplicate layer. So Command J and then play your Velvia Color Boost. Uh, 
and it's mad, you know, but I'm just looking at her hair. And so I invert the mask, command I to invert the mask, B for brush, and I'm going to use a, a, a flow of about 30% here. So 30%, in fact, I'll go 20% flow, and I'm going to go um, maximum 50% opacity. And a nice soft edge brush. And I can add subtly um, painting in white, of course. Gerald noticed that again, no doubt. Um, hair, colour, and vibrance. Anywhere I paint more is getting more colour added to it. So before, after, before, after. So that would be something that you might want to play with, etc. That's at 100%, V5, 50%. Just giving a wee bit of kick to the colours in her hair. Yeah, I actually could do quite like that. So I'm just going to flatten an image. And again, just file, save. You can see it bottom left here, saving 10%. So saving it quite slow. Sometimes if you try and envisage an image in black and white, you just have to go into channels and just click on the red channel, green channel, blue channel, just to see what it would look like uh, as a black and white. So that might make a nice black and white image to play with as well. So, but I like the way these, uh, the materials coming up under this, the top of the head um, and the face in the middle, etc. So yeah, I think I'm probably into that into competition somewhere along the line. If I thought this little loop, um, was catching of the eye, which I think it is, then I'm just going to come in now someday and spend half an hour cloning that uh, or using the content aware tool just to basically get rid of that little loop, which might be a wee bit of uh, judge bait. Um, but yeah, I think you might see that one again. Okay, that is all I intend to do in terms of editing images this evening. Um, I don't know whether people can ask questions, William, or not. I'm certainly not if they want to unmute their mic, turn the cameras on, they can start asking you questions. That's absolutely easy enough for it to handle. So any questions, anybody? Ross, it's Adrian. Yeah. I don't have all the brushes you have on your Photoshop. How did you get those and install them? So brushes, I have a folder actually. So here it is on my screen. Can you see that? So yep. there's brushes and there's brushes there to make your eyes water. Um, so I can make any of those available. Let's say I wanted to install um, this one. Let me see. There's one hair brushes. Um, so I would probably just copy that onto the, the desktop. So paste, I've copied and pasted it onto the desktop. And I go back into Photoshop, into the brush tool. And it's this little cog here, uh, import brushes. And I navigate to desktop and there is um, hair brushes open. And now they'll always go in at the bottom. So there is hair brushes by WCS Wildcat. Um, so those are actual brushes that you could paint somebody's hair. Um, you get brushes for all sorts. I have brushes there for smoke, for branches, for barbed wire, butterflies. I've just downloaded them from, if you, if you go onto Google and Google Photoshop brushes snow, you'll get snow brushes, you'll get rain brushes, but that's, I've shown you there how you import them. Uh, at the moment, I am using uh, brush tip. If I turn brush tip off, then you can, you get a different view. Uh, it's entirely up to you whether you use brush stroke. Brush stroke tends not to mean a lot. Um, you're better looking at uh, brush tip rather than brush stroke because then you can actually see what the uh, the brush does. Okay. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Doesn't look like it. 
none from me. They're all uh, astounded into silence by the uh, skills they have seen. <laughs> William, sorry, William, were you recording this? Because I only picked up about ten percent. <laughs> it is being recorded, Terry. Uh, both himself and Leo are recording it. Hopefully, Leo will, Leo will get it posted up tonight into the uh, Cats Like group. Yeah, once I find it, Here's, once I find uh, it where it is, I'll do that. <laughs> and yes, thanks, Ross, for doing that. That was great. No problem. Yes, Ross, thanks very much. Thank you, Ross. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thank okay, you, Ross. Ross. So but that's about it. And thank you very much for tonight, Ross. No problem. Um, I think the next stage is probably, uh, I think it has to go to the committee, but I think it's the AGM. Yeah, I think we, we could probably hold the AGM by Zoom. But uh, I tr hope that if we do, we get more people. 27, 28 for a club of our size, just uh, to me, it's not good enough for when everyone's in lockdown. Maybe they're all out partying. Yeah, well, there's a problem myself. Buddy's <laughs> devil would be fantastic for an AGM. Ralph, they don't need any other tips. <laughs> well, it will be will be shared, but uh, I'll put a wee note up saying that their uh, their absence was noted. See if it kickstarts anyone. Uh, other than that, um, I think that's enough of the meeting this evening. If everyone's happy. Okay, folks. Cheers. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.